guy. So if anybody wants to know what the real Mount Adams is like, that's what the documentary is for. So they can see, you know, the, the Hollywood version and the real life version. Wow. Yeah. And to, to pick up on that a little bit, uh, that's a great point. Uh, we have the, we have the Hollywood version, the, uh, the, you know, low budget way brothers, you know, put together a film. Uh, and then we also have the, uh, we're here's, here's what's happening. So, we are doing interviews with eyewitnesses, like, for example, Clyde Lewis. So uh, on Friday, we were just up in Portland interviewing Clyde, and he was telling us about his Bigfoot encounter, uh, and we got all this uh, on tape with us. And then uh, we're heading up later on in the summer, we're heading up to Mount Adams uh, to do a full investigation. And, uh, and you know something about this, Michael, because we are partnering with your in- UFO investigation team to make this happen. And uh, we're excited to work with you guys um, on a three-part uh, investigation. So our team is divided into three different areas. We have one group looking for Bigfoot, and this is uh, Tim's group, along with um, Mike Beers and Shelly Montana, uh, leading that group looking for Bigfoot around the area. And then I'm heading up the mountain with uh, Lee Strauss from the UFO investigation team. And then uh, we also have your team uh, that's going to be uh, near UFO Alley. So, I mean, this is, this is going to be a, a pretty big investigation, and we have three camera crews on this. So we're going to get tons of footage. We're using GoPros. We, I mean, you guys have some pretty high-tech night vision as well. So uh, we're excited to partner with you guys on this and hopefully, uh, you know, investigate some of these, these mysteries and, and find out what's going on up there uh, from multiple angles. So our plan is to, you know, get all this footage together, and uh, we're going to compile it, you know, into a uh, hopefully, you know, an exciting, uh, fast-paced reality TV-style documentary and put it out there. And so people can watch this along with the movie so they can get the... Uh, you know, the real side of this phenomenon. Well, yes, and uh, and Philip and Tim, we we, uh, we at the UFOI team, the group that I've uh, founded and direct is, we are just pleased as punch to be involved with this project, and you guys uh, with Clyde Lewis, uh, with uh, East City Ranch and those folks. Of course, uh, if people don't know, Clyde Lewis is the paranormal radio talk show host uh, down there in Portland. He's... Uh, He's the one that keeps Portland weird. Uh, really great guy, and uh, boy, if you are you going to be able to get Clyde on film uh, telling his story because the voice this guy has and the way he tells stories would be very compelling. Oh, dude, we already did it. We uh, we got him on film on uh, Friday, so we uh, were up there and around twelve working with his buddy Ron. And, yeah, he talked to us for about 40 minutes. We got it all on uh, video. Well, that will, be, that will be a wonderful story and interesting as well. And then, of course, uh, uh, the UFOI team has uh, made some uh, safaris up to uh, Mount Adams ourselves in the past. And I believe that you've uh, stationed us, or at least part of us, Philip, at the uh, Takalak Lake area where we had in the past, as the UFOI team cited, an amazing um, display in the uh, dark night sky of three separate, in in a triangle, uh, lights in the sky that look like stars, but they're super bright. And all of a sudden, we were looking through our night vision uh, cameras, our stop action and uh, telescopes, and this three uh, pronged tr- uh, equilateral triangle all of a sudden just starts falling in sequence together and not changing their position and actually disappears either behind the mountain or into the mountain from our position at Talakala Lake and we had that on uh, videotape uh, as a you know an archive for that sighting so thank you for allowing us to be that part of the triangle in this investigative uh, film that you guys are putting together. And I understand from what the, what you're telling us is that we are all going to be in uh, constant contact with uh, 
uh, walkie-talkies at the same time while you guys are doing your filming, we're doing our filming, and Michael Beers is out there in the uh, hinterland doing the Bigfooting. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. This is a collaborative effort. It's a, it's a joint effort with, uh, I don't know, I mean, it looks like we have over a dozen people so far that are going to be, uh, we're going to be communicating with to make all this happen. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm excited as hell to see what's going to take place on this. You know, we haven't quite done anything to this level yet. And uh, especially with having, you know, all these cameras on site and, uh, you know, getting all this uh, on, you know, on tape is going to be awesome. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, last time we were up at Mount Adams, we were uh, staying at the East Eddy Ranch. We were talking to James. And, uh, yeah, just getting some uh, footage of the, you know, different lights that appear on the mountain. You know, the thing is, the East Eddy Ranch is uh, about 13 miles from the mountain. So what you're seeing there is quite a distance away. So our goal is to just get up on the mountain, get right in the middle of the action, and try to get the best uh, footage that we can of what's going on up there. And, uh, yeah, so, I, you know, I can't wait to uh, see how that's going to turn out. Well, Philip, um, I, you are be in great hands with uh, Lee Strauss, our UFOI team uh, mountain man. Basically, we uh, he he almost looks like Les Stroud, by the way. So you'll recognize him as soon as you see him. Uh, and he's been up to the top of Mount Adams quite a few times. Uh, he and uh, Ander Uristi from our group as well. So they know the way up, and they will be able to get you to where you want to go. Um, and in, this is going to be quite a scientific uh, adventure as well, because if if indeed you guys sight something from your vantage point on the top of Mount Adams, we've got you triangulated uh, from the back of the mountain at uh, Talakala Lake, uh, potentially even East Seti, and wherever uh, Michael Beers uh, will be uh, looking for the, the Bigfoot. And if, if we can actually all spot the same thing at the same time, we have one heck of a lot of data we can record. Oh yeah. That's, that's going to rock. So, um, uh, that is coming up, uh, obviously in, uh, late summer, maybe early fall where this, uh, thing will be filmed. And, uh, then Tim, I guess, uh, gets to get all the footage and start putting the thing together. Which, What's your strategy going to be, Tim, on post-production? Well, I mean, editing a documentary is way different from editing a movie. Um, so, I mean, it pretty much means, yeah, we'll just capture as much as we possibly can, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything in between. And then, basically, we just go through and we watch all of the tons of viewing sessions. And then you know, try to mold all of that into, into a story. I'm not, I have no idea what we're going to find, what we're going to encounter, what we're going to get on film, but whatever it is, you know, we, that's what we build the story around it. So, you know, it, it's exciting, you know, it's, it's like, it's improv filmmaking is what making a documentary kind of is. Oh, I, I like that. Improv filmmaking. Yeah. Kind of like a uh, cinema verite as well. You just go uh -huh. out and, uh, and gather the footage uh, and watch the story develop before your very eyes, I, under, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, this, the, we have the story set up, which is great. We have, you know, it, the, this will take the audience on definitely on a, on a good ride. They'll go from, you know, the ranch to, you know, all sides of the mountain, you know, um, and then, of course, also the, the interviews with, uh, you know, like Clyde Lewis and that thing. So, you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be funny. It's going to be, you know, you have the, the scientific side, you have the research, you have all of the you have uh, tons of information. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think audience members are going to really like this. Well, and obviously, and we also on the UFO I team have our own uh, what we call scientific sat phone consultants that are available to us in the field. Um, we've got, uh, of course, Peter Davenport on the line. Every time something happens and you want to verify that it has not been or has been reported by someone else, we can always check in with Peter. 
but we also have uh, Dr. Richard Haynes, who is a NASA scientist, retired, and uh, has actually got an organization that he just retired from that did all of the pilot sighting reports uh, from military and commercial and private pilots around the country that want to remain anonymous, but they want to report these anomalous activity. Uh, so if if you are, we would offer, of course, uh, any of those satellite uh, sat phone consultant guys uh, up for you if there was something you need to verify or have a question about, uh, we can we can do that as well. That that you know is just something we we always do as the UFO I team. Yeah, that is incredible. That's you know I mean it's it's bringing on the people like that and and all of your team and everything you know I mean Philip has I have to give it to Phil I mean he's really you know he's he's really done a lot to to put this together um you know and i i think you know with all of us up there uh, i think this is going to be a wild ride yes and uh the actual post-production process of a documentary uh does it take longer or or is it easier to uh to edit uh, after it's all over hmm well it's different i wouldn't say it's easier or better it's just different i mean a lot of what you have is you you kind of like you just put a big old you know like uh, uh just a, a tack board you know and you just take post-it cards you know and you you write out all of the like the major events that have happened in your documentary that the, the key points in the story and you put that on a huge bulletin board and then you just you shuffle them around you you figure out how you have your act one two and three um, and that's kind of where most of your editing goes. So you sort of turn your the the real life um, scenes, the you know the things that we've captured. You you sort of try to categorize them into you know into uh, like index cards. So you have like you know so turn them into scenes, and then from there you know it's just editing the the uh, individual uh, shots to you know try to tell a, a meaningful story and make it entertaining. Yes. And, uh, uh, Philip, I would imagine that you are well aware of the timing, uh, the uh, intensity that you are expecting to uh, create throughout this production as well. Is there a certain strategy that you have when you organize those uh, three-by-five cards for each scene once it's all over? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the uh, essentially how we work, I mean, it depends on, uh, what kind of project we're doing. When we did the Mount Adams uh, feature film drama, uh, we had it, uh, we had, uh, there are certain areas where it was storyboarded, so we had every shot drawn out. We had a shot list, and you just go through and you make sure you get them all by the end of the day. Um, and then, you know, Tim, of course, has an assistant editor who comes in, like Josh. And uh, uh, by the way, um, you remember Josh, right? Josh uh, Weiss. He's the uh, kid who works with us. And uh, he rocks at a lot of things. He's a great videographer. He's going with us. So uh, I'm sure he's uh, looking forward to uh, <laughs> working with Josh again. But, uh, yeah, so somebody like Josh goes through and Josh organizes the clips, puts them into folders, you know, based on scenes and all that under Tim's direction. Uh, when it comes to doing the documentary, my goal as a director is just to get as much footage as possible. So I'm running into a shotgun approach on this. Uh, I am not planning out every shot. What I'm doing is my goal is to equip everyone who is in this project with the absolute best uh, equipment they can get and uh, training as well and an understanding of what the end goal is. So as long as they know, hey, this is how many shots, uh, this is the type of shots we're looking for, just get as many as you possibly can. Fill up all those memory cards. Uh, we also want to make sure that we have good audio, too. So, you know, making sure we're using, you know, the right mics. Uh, and, yeah, just going through it and making sure we have all the, the rental equipment uh, accounted for. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it, when it comes to this project, we're just going shotgun approach. We're going to get everything, every possible angle we can, we can think of. And at the end of the day, Tim makes the decision on what uh, shots he likes what he wants to keep in the documentary, and what ends up, you know, hitting the cutting room floor. You know, we could be looking at getting possibly, between all the different cameras, we could be looking at 50 hours of footage. 
Now, how much of that's actually going to be in the documentary? Uh, well, pretty much an hour.